Okay, YouTube, I'm getting ahead of you. Camera was dead, so I had to charge it. I went ahead and, and welded this uh, trunk pan to the frame rails in this area. I got to thinking about it, and all I really need to do to weld these brackets in is just, just turn the heat up a little bit, and uh, the weld will penetrate all the way to the frame rail. I'm not sure what I was thinking about repositioning the holes where they would line up with these holes. So like I said, I just I just went ahead and uh, got these all the way welded in. This one over here, I've done the same thing. And I have went ahead and, and sanded some of the epoxy in that area. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape this off exactly where it's gonna go. I'm gonna put some weld through down. The rest of this will be uh, epoxied once it's done. And I'll probably go ahead and uh, sand and scuff these as well. But that's what I'm working on. Just prepping this and get it ready for welding. We got to uh, prep some of this area too. So I'm gonna, while I got some epoxy mixed up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover up some of this bare metal. So I'll bring you back when I have a little bit more done. Okay guys, I have the uh, metal wall prepped here, got it all cleaned up. I'm going to outline where the brackets go and uh, place some weld through primer. Okay YouTube, I have this uh, bumper brace bracket area and the bumper brace brackets themselves prepped for some weld through primer. I've just kind of outlined the outside of the bracket and I've sanded the epoxy in that area. I kind of removed a little bit more epoxy than I wanted to and that was mainly due from the welding. I had some of it just lift. I got those areas pretty hot. But we'll go ahead and put the weld through in that area there and then we'll reapply some epoxy later. Got the plug weld holes prepped for some weld through on the bottom of those. There's the driver's side. So I cleaned this metal and I'm going to wait. I cleaned it with uh, wax and grease remover and I'm going to wait about 30 minutes and then I'll come back and put some weld through primer on. And I'll show you that. Alright, guys, we have our. Uh, Weld through primer on our bumper brace brackets and on the trunk pan. You guys can probably hear the, the wind hitting the front of the garage door. It's a real windy day here in southwest Virginia. Trees are out there moving around pretty good. Really windy today. I've had them up here to look at that garage door a couple times. I just ain't never been able to get it fixed. I don't know if there's anything they can do. It's just the, the movement that it has in the door with the wind hitting on it. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. This video is about these uh, bumper braces. So the next time you guys see these bumper braces, I'll have them clamped down into the trunk and we'll be getting ready to weld them in. We'll talk to you then. Okay guys, it's April the 17th. We're out in the garage this evening. It's just about 10 after 6 in the evening. And we're finally going to go ahead and finalize these bumper brace brackets. Get them welded in place. I kind of wasn't sure on how I was going to do this. Thought I would wait. But the more I've thought about it, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, weld them in. 
I believe we'll be okay. And once we get those welded, we'll move down and start prepping the trunk pan to get ready to receive the cross rail. Okay guys, I've got this uh, driver's side bumper brace bracket welded in and I had a little trouble dialing the welder in. There's basically the, the bracket itself which is 14 gauge, the trunk pan, and then on these back holes you have the frame rail itself. So there's three pieces of metal there and then of course just the two up front. But it's a little tricky trying to weld 14 gauge to 20 because you want the penetration to get through the 20 and the 14 but you don't want to blow a hole through the 20 and I end up doing that in one of them but I just stayed with it and uh, welded it back up. I believe it's okay. I've got a little bit more of a mound on my spot welds than I would like to have but that's just where I stayed into it just a little bit longer trying to get the penetration. Let's take a look. Right there is the front. And of 
course I've got those two down there. And then there's the sides. But anyway, I'm going to start grinding these plug welds down and I'll bring you back when I have that done. Okay, YouTube, so we're grinding down those welds using this uh, rock here. I've showed you guys that. And this is a 3 16 And just to give you an idea how long these things last, this is actually still the first one since I've been on YouTube. I've been using this thing for almost a year. I put the, uh, the deck filler, the package tray extension, that little patch that we did in the package tray, the, all that work in the left side inner fender well, the work that we did around the shackle area, the trunk, these braces and whatever else I can think of. This is the same rock that I've been using for grinding. And like I said, I just take the tops off until it gets down to the, the metal. I've tried to use the angle grinders and I wind up tearing everything up when I do. I can't see, I can't see what I'm doing. The, the grinder itself is in the way, but with this, this little deal here just spinning, I got really good visibility of what I'm doing. I like this. It works for me. Now, I want to do, uh, just turn the camera back on again. We'll show you the tops of these welds that I'm knocked down. And before I finish dress anything underneath, I want to show you that. So, so far I've just got the, uh, the tops of these cut, cut down. I went a little too crazy on this one. And I haven't touched these in here yet debating on what to do there. I'll probably use the belt sander on that. There's that. But actually this is another reason I went ahead and decided to do this is because when I put the cross rail on I can go ahead and sand this area here and re-epoxy it with the cross rail. And that's going to really help me out. There's the one that blew through on me. And these others are just barely coming through. That one come through quite a bit, and so did these. And you can see that down on the frame rail, that's not all the way through, but it just about is. So I've got some cleanup work to do underneath. That's one of the things that I'm kind of wondering about on the welding is sometimes when I'm welding, I like to actually see that penetration come through to the backside. And some people say you don't really need all that, that as long as it discolors like it did on that frame rail there, that that is good. And I guess that's just something I need to do some testing on. I, I've tested a couple of my plug welds before with some pieces of metal and, and tried to uh, rip them in a vise and the way it works is if there's a hole in the base metal, then it's a good plug weld. And I need to try that on, on just do a little test and see. Right now, it's on this part of the project, it's not bothering me too bad if it's coming through. I'll just, I'll finish both sides. But of course, the other downfall to that is more heat. And we all know that heat causes warpage. So definitely don't want to put a lot of warpage into a panel if I don't have to. So, but that's just, that's just kind of thinking out loud there. So you guys give me your thoughts on that, what you normally do when you're welding. I always look for that penetration on the backside, but I've had a, I've had a couple guys tell me that I've got the welder turned up too hot when I'm doing that, and they may be right. But that's the only way I know I've got it welded. <laughs> And uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of known for going to the extreme on things, so I might not need to do that. But anyway, give me your thoughts on that. 
I'm going to get to grinding a little bit more and I'll bring you back here in a little bit. Okay YouTube, we got this bracket in. Went ahead and uh, cleaned up around it. And actually done some sanding, trying to feather some of the edges out. Feather this uh, epoxy back here so we can put a little fresh epoxy. This area right here had a little trouble grinding that area. Couldn't hardly get the uh, little die grinder down in there. I do have one of those small ones and just had to get it down here in an angle and just I used the belt sander a little bit but I can't keep it very even with the belt sander. I did use the belt sander for that area right there and even that area right there is a little bit high but I didn't grind it all the way flush. I'm going to go ahead and uh, once we do the final on the trunk that will get a swipe of seam sealer and I believe that will be okay like it is. Let's go underneath. Went ahead and uh, did a full grind down here. Dressed everything up and been in the process of doing some sanding, feathering back some of the edges and I'm trying to decide whether or not put a little epoxy down in here before we do the cross rail. I might. I'm just trying to decide on that. I need to hurry up the side so I can get moving on the uh, cross rail. Still got this one to do, but that's going to do it for me this evening. I've got about two and a half hours wrapped up in that one little bracket install. And we still got one more to go. But anyway, when I get to doing that one, I'll bring you back. Gonna do it the same way. And we'll be moving forward. You got it made, buddy. Okay, you two. We have the passenger side bumper brace bracket welded. I didn't film any of that. I'd already filmed the other side for you guys. It's just uh, the same thing. Overall, the welds turned out pretty decent. Seemed like I had the welder dialed in a little bit better this time. Let's go underneath. You can see here, I came through just a little bit on the back side. And the areas are just the trunk pan only. And then the areas that the trunk pan and the frame rails are located is just discolored there. Still think it's welded really good. I believe this will be okay. So now we're going to start sanding and scuffing. I got to go ahead and put the cross rail up here and mark where the holes are going to be for that. We can go ahead and prep the bottom of this and maybe go ahead and put some epoxy on a few places before we actually fit the uh, cross rail. I have a little bit more to show. I'll bring you guys back. Okay, YouTube, got the brackets in and I've actually started sanding. I've been sanding now for a couple hours and I'm about tired of that. But anyway, that's going to conclude this video. I want to show you the brackets with all the welds ground down and then we'll pick back up with the uh, cross rail installation. So let's take a look. I know you guys have already seen the driver's side, but here is the passenger side. The welds have already been ground down. And I've actually cleaned some of this with the uh, wax and grease remover. It just hasn't evaporated all yet. And I've been sanding, sanded around the uh, jack bracket there so I can put some epoxy in there. I've actually started prepping for the cross rail. 
So we're going to put some well through primer down in some of these areas. Let's go underneath. Okay, I've got my areas here marked right here, here, and here, and there. That's where my plug welds are going to be. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mix up a little bit of epoxy. And I'm going to come in here in these areas like right here. And of course the frame rail here. And over on this other side, I'm going to brush paint some epoxy in on that area. Just to protect it while the uh, car is in the uh, restoration phase. And then we'll go ahead and put some well through primer down in these areas, these spots that I've got marked. And then once, once the cross rail is on, all this in the front of the cross rail area will be sanded with 180. This whole area here. And we'll epoxy this area. And this area here will actually be final because the tail panel is going to go on it. But this area back here underneath the car, like I said, once the car is on the rotisserie, it's, uh, it's going to get uh, sanded and re -epoxed. Now this area here that's bare metal, this is where the jack bracket was welded at. And what I've done on it is I've, I've sanded here in the bare metal area with 80. And I've also went up to the, the transition area with 80. Then I switched to 180 in this transition area and feathered it back. And then once I got on out to here, I switched over to a red scotch bright pad. And just scuffed everything. Now I do plan to put a couple coats with the gun on that. And I'll do that when I actually repaint the front of the cross rail. So like I said, that, uh, that I'll be... This will be re-sanded eventually later. But I just want to protect it from rusting. And when we paint the front of this cross rail, it'll pretty much be a, a final couple coats of epoxy after it's welded in. That's all I got guys. I've got a mess to clean up as usual. So I'm going to get to cleaning up a little bit. And then like I said, I'll bring you back. Next video should be uh, cross rail welding. And we'll get that welded and uh, get the welds ground down and, and get some epoxy on it. And then we'll be moving on to the next problem. Just want to take a few moments and say I appreciate all my subscribers. I picked up several in the last couple weeks. I, I want to thank everybody for following the build. And when I get some more progress, I'll be back online. Thanks.